Pleasure to be joined by Chris Barocas of uh, Inter Miami, the goalkeeping coach, director of academy goalkeeping with Inter Miami 2, also helping out with uh, Inter Miami 2 as well. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the Heron Outlet. Not a problem, Ian. Well, I want to talk about goalkeeping today with you because I, I felt like Drake has had such a wonderful start to the year, two clean sheets at home. We we discussed him and Marsman having that great battle last year throughout the middle of the year. Drake ends it with a, a goalkeeping uh of goalkeeper of the year nominee, finishing in that one of the top three goalkeepers in MLS in 2022. And and the product that that you guys are developing, also with CJ Dos Santos and the the new uh goalkeeper that you just drafted in Cole Jensen to give fans a better understanding of, of what goes into day in and day out when you're working training with a goalkeeper, they're away from the team. They're, they're, you know, off to the side doing your own thing. What are you guys focused on every single day that's separated from the team? Well, that's a multi, multi-level question. So um, I'll see if I can break it down kind of step-by-step step. Um, depending on the day of the week, it could be, we're getting them ready to face opposition and how the opposition plays and the trends in the opposition game, whether they like to play crosses in from all air, uh, angles and areas um, inside our defensive third of the field. So that, that might be something that we're, we're concentrating on. Um, I think what we want them to do is we want them to be as comfortable and confident as possible going into a game um, for MLS two, we're still a couple weeks out from that. So a lot of it is still helping them, uh, develop, whereas it can be more of a scripted week. It can be Monday, the first day back, they're working on some technical work to make themselves a little bit better in one area, um, where it's a little bit more individual development. Um, Tuesday could be say one V ones where they're working on the ball, dealing with it, beating the last line and them having to come out and make a big dynamic save Wednesday might be crosses. So preseason, a lot of it is teaching how we want them to affect the game and how they play within our team structure as well in possession, whether it's, you know, building out of the back, whether it's how high we need them to play to defend space when we're in the attacking third of the field. So, um, Preseason, you, you see a little bit more focus on them getting better and understanding the position um, it, with with more detail. Um, you know, obviously CJ having been here, he he has a good level of understanding, and he's obviously a phenomenal goalkeeper. Um, you know, Cole being the new um, new goalkeeper in in the core is is learning very very quickly. But I think you know a lot of it in college is they're just focused on their opposition because they've got 20 games in a three month period and they've got to win those games to get to playoffs. So I don't feel like there's as much of a focus on their individual development, nor can there really be because you have to have a day off. You have two matches a week. How, where do you find the time? Right. Um, right. We're right. allowed a certain number of hours in the NCAA. Whereas we can sit down post-practice after lunch. We don't have to feel rushed because of classes or anything like that. We can sit down with these goalkeepers, specifically Cole or CJ, and and go over film from training, go over film from the game, and really take our time and dissect it. Um, and then say, hey, this is what we're doing the next day in training, and this is how we link it um, from their own film or from film um, of the opposition, you know, to make sure that they're as successful as possible. Um, yeah, you know, the, the the biggest thing I think for, for those two goalkeepers is going to be continue to improve and continue to develop confidence and the ability to read the game at a at a high level. I'm curious on that what what you're watching, what fans should be watching because you know it, the, we joke a lot that goalkeepers are only mo or mostly known for the mistakes that are made that that you you have to limit mistakes. We often see the the. You know, the less you hear of a goalkeeper, probably the better, because that means you're not getting challenged, you're not letting goals up. So when you are doing that evaluation for fans, even who are standing behind the goal, right, and trying to figure out what what makes something good outside of those spectacular saves that we've seen uh, from time to time, what, what are they looking at to say, hey, I like how this goalkeeper against that goalkeeper, or, uh, you know, a young kid that's growing up here in South Florida wants to start uh, figuring things out uh, as as he or she is growing up. So I think the ability for them to read the game and communicate and organize, especially in the professional game, is, is massive because 
right? You don't want to have those moments where you're known for the mistake. Well, the more action you face, just simple percentages, you're going to make a mistake at some point, or they're going to score a goal, even if you do everything right. The more action you have in front of the net, the more defensive actions you have to do in a game, the more likely you are to concede a goal. Now, with, with goalkeepers, you know, younger, they love the action. They love trying to dive around and make saves. As you get older, goalkeepers want to continue to, um, you know, prevent those actions, whether they're communicating, whether they're organizing the positioning, and then being able to read what's going on in front of them. You know, the position of the ball, um, the position of the defender, are they able to process this information in our head and figure out what kind of attacking possibilities there are? And how quickly can they do that? How much detail can they put into their communication? And then from there, how quickly can their brain process and anticipate what might be getting ready to happen? Can they eliminate some of the, the possibilities of the attacker based off of the information they see in front of them? Drake has really come on so strong in the past couple of years since arriving at Inter Miami and now has taken on a new leadership role with a new contract, believing in him long term for, for the club. What was that like for you to see him rewarded with the new deal to, to start this season? And just from your perspective as someone who is is primarily responsible for developing goalkeepers to, to have a guy like that who has come along so well throughout your system. So, I mean, I, I, first of all, I'm extremely excited for him. He, he's earned it, you know, um, going through what he's gone through over the last couple of years and being the young guy in the building and having to take his lumps, you know, he's, he's responded very, very well. And he's grown as a, as a person and as a player. Um, and, and he'll tell you the same thing. He's, he's more mindful of his preparation and his routine and how it helps him on game day. Um, you know, as far as talent goes and upside goes, I think everyone from the time Drake first got here was always going to be very high on him. He has the ability to play at a high level. Um, and I think we're just now kind of getting, you know, scratching the surface in, in that as well. Like he's he, he's going to be a phenomenal goalkeeper. He's still quite young in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, but he's wise beyond his years. Um you know, for me, I got to spend the majority of the 2021 season working with Drake in games. And, you know, he's always been the type of guy that's been hungry for feedback, um, whether it's just a simple, you know, simple little saying that I'll, I'll say to him, you know, prior to the game or anything like that, like you've earned the right to play well, you've worked hard all week long, you're going to play well because you've earned it, you know, um, so, and, and obviously every time we see each other around the building and passing, you know, I, how you doing, how's things going? Like, you know, just identifying with him as a person, um, not just an athlete, how, how's everything going? You feeling good? You know, I, I just recently found out he was engaged. So that's awesome for him as well, you know? So multiple levels of congratulations for him. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's really, it, it feels good. It feels like, you know, you, you validate what you do. Um, when you see a, someone grow like that and get opportunities and, you know, have people show the confidence in him to get, you know, to sign him to a long-term deal. I think everyone's around the building's excited about it uh, because, you know, Drake is a, is a good person and he's a very good goalkeeper. And why wouldn't you want to have someone that has both of those characteristics in your building for an extended period of time to help shape the success of this team um, and, and, the, and this club? For the next several years so i think like i said everyone's pretty excited about it um because of, of of who drake is and what he has continued to develop into and obviously it's not he's not a finished product he'll be the first one to tell you that so i think that this is this is this is great this is an unbelievable resource we have now that you know we've got him you know playing so confidently and, and affecting the game you, what are those things that, that you want to see develop? Obviously, we, we at, from watching, know about his tremendous shot-stopping ability. Um, the, you know, the, the criticism has often come in terms of distribution um, and how he can play out of the back. What are those things that you're focused on when you say he has potential to even take another level for him, for him to work on his game? So, for, you know, obviously, a, a couple errant passes that have led to big moments. I think just him you know taking it moment by moment and not trying to force anything 
Um, and, and I think he's, he's, he's aware of it. It's, it's early in the season as well. Um, typically you want to give yourself four or five games to kind of work out some of those kinks. And yes, we have preseason, but the pressure is not there like it is during the regular season. So adapting to that level of pressure. I mean, I think you look at the way he was playing and the, in the last seven, eight games in the year, he just needs to get, get himself into that rhythm again and, and, and feel confident about that, which I don't have a doubt in my mind that he can get there. Um, and, and probably in a short period of time as well. So, um, you know, those, those are the things that for me, like, you know, can you, can you consistently stay here? Right. And, and even in a game where you're going to be experiencing a different level of emotion from minute to minute, can you stay, can you stay balanced, which he does a good job of, you know, it's just now those emotions and those feelings he's getting back to because they've been away for so long because he had an off season and preseason. Now it's the regular season and, and the games really matter. Right? right. So him, him working out those little, little kinks, um, you know, over the course of the next couple of games is, is what you're going to want him to do. Cause I think, at the end of the day, he was distributing the ball. He was playing out rather well in the last phase of uh, the season last year um, in games that mattered, in games that were must win for us. So I know he can do it. Um, he's shown that he can do it. It's just now, all right, maybe for, for him, it's just, you know, just, okay, these two moments I had to get the the shanks or so, like a golf swing, right? You know, when the pressure's on, you might have to, you might, you might miss hit it a couple of times maybe that's what he's going through. And, and, you know, that's something that he'll learn from and he'll get better at because he's got the right mentality. I see him on his regen days, um, the work he's putting in, you know, just to get a little bit better um, in, in certain areas when a lot of other people are on the bike and then their legs up, you know, he's, he's, he's still working on himself. And I think him being borderline perfectionist and that type of an idea um, is going to help him over the long run because he knows how to he knows how to work, he knows how to switch off and give himself time. You know he is, you know he was a number one last year at the end of the year, and that was his his first year on the first team doing that. So I think for him, you know, you see where he is in in two years, and I mean the sky's the limit for the guy. I, you know, I, I, I am impressed where he's at now, and you know the the thought processes of where he could be in a couple of years is, is, you know, something that's really exciting. We spoke with Phil this morning and he was talking about uh, Drake's got like his quirk is uh, poetry. He's very into poetry and painting. I, I, and Phil had said that all goalkeepers have to be a little weird in order to play goalkeeper, that if you weren't weird, then you probably would be an outfield player having some fun. What's your weird thing or what are the other weird things that like Nick and CJ and Cole have that, that are the, their quirks? <laughs> So I'm still with, with Cole. I'm still learning, you know, what, what his quirks are. Every time I see him, he's got a coffee in hand. For the he most told part. me that this morning too. There's, and look, Hey, if that's your guilty pleasure, by all means, there's worse things out there. Right. Um, you know, I, for me now that I'm retired, it might be junk food, but whatever. Um, but, you know, I think uh, yeah, goalkeepers, I wouldn't say they have to be quirky. They have to have an edge. Um and the edge comes in different ways. Drake does poetry and that might be a way for him to switch off and relax. Um, you know, when, when I was playing, I, you know, I, I don't know what my quirkiness was or what, what my edge moment was or anything like that, because I was, you know, I, I, it, it didn't matter what it was. It was something to get my mind off of soccer for a little bit, you know, even if it was an hour. Um, now I, would say probably yoga is something that I do to, to decompress and also help take care of my body. Cause I'm not getting any younger. Um, you know, CJ, I don't, I don't know with him um, what, what it is. Cause he seems pretty level headed. He's a uh, level headed. He's a very passionate guy. He's very fiery when he's out on the field. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, the, the best player on the team or, or anyone else, he's going to hold you accountable. He's got that, that Portuguese fire in his heart that, you know, he's going to get on you and he's going to let you know when you've done it right. And, you know, he's going to let you know when he needs more out of you. 
Right. So I think, you know, sometimes people will say he's got, he's got to be crazy, right. Or he's got to, you know, got to be a little quirky because he is that fiery, you know, he's got that, you know, that energy about him. So, um, you know, and, and that's, I guess that's what makes us unique. And anyone that jumps in front of a soccer ball that's traveling potentially 80, 90 miles an hour and will make a save with their face, chest, hands, feet, um, you know, whatever has to, has to have a little edge and, and be willing to put their body on the line. Right. Yeah. I mean, you guys are crazy. Um, so I'll, I'll call you crazy. If you won't call yourself crazy, I don't want anything to do with I get, that. I get, I used to, I used to call myself crazy. I'm a father of two now, so I can't be that crazy. There you go. That's, that's, that's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, you know, this isn't your first stop in MLS. You were at Red Bulls, you're at Orlando city as well. Um, and, and what you've seen throughout the league, also in the collegiate ranks as well, what is it about Inter Miami's goalkeeping room? We've talked a lot about just top to bottom that this is a, a very unique situation that Miami has right now with one through four goalkeepers that they feel comfortable with, that they're developing, that you're developing, that you're working with each day. It's rare to have everybody sort of on the same page moving in the right direction like this. Well, you know, for, for me, it's, it's a, you know, it starts with getting the right people in the building and, you know, from our academy um, into MLS next pro and our reserve team. And then also up to our first team, I think we have the right people in the building and we have the right belief of how we want our goalkeepers to play. And we're very consistent in that message. So, you know, when you look at one through four on the first team, and then you look down into our group and then down into the academy, all of our goalkeepers are playing um, very similarly. And, you know, we had to look at what's going to make goalkeepers successful at, you know, our, our older age groups and based off of the demands of the game, you know, and the way we want to play as a club, we want our goalkeepers to be, you know, confident, and their ability to move the ball with their feet and be an option in possession. But also they have to be able to affect the game um, and keep the ball out of the net. So, you know, obviously there's physical characteristics that go involved with that. There's technical and tactical. Um, there's the psychological piece, you know, being able to withstand a lot of pressure. And then there's also, you know, the social side of things for our goalkeepers as well, because, you know, they go from an environment where they're off by themselves as goalkeepers with a goalkeeping coach, and then they have to integrate with the team and they have to have credibility. They have to have leadership. They have to have respect. Um, and, and, and those are learned traits and characteristics for goalkeepers. Not every person is going to be, you know, comfortable at going in, injecting themselves into a, a full team training session and go out there and just speaking and communicating like CJ, perhaps like that might be, you know, one of CJ's special skills is the way he can integrate himself socially in that type of an environment after being detached from the team for 30, 45, 50 minutes. Um, you know, and it may be something that he's learned over the course of his career. Right. Um, you know, it, for, for Drake, it might be the, the in possession stuff right? That he's, he's constantly working on that to evolve and become better in those moments so he can go out and affect the game. But having the belief that, um, you know, doing all this hard work is what's going to have the impact for them in the game. And then, you know, for, for us with having the right people in the building, I, I'm fortunate enough to every day have the support of the head coach, even though uh, he likes to say we're quirky and everything like that, having the support of the head coach, um, you know, and the goalkeeping coach with the first team to, you know, to say, hey, we're doing this the right way. We're building our group of goalkeepers from from the ground up, um, because, you know, I, I think our goal um, is to get academy players onto the first team. Well, the, the kind of the one position that we're missing so far is a goalkeeper. Um, so we're, we're at a place where we're, we're pushing for that. We're you know, it may not happen next year, but the plan we have in place, we have the belief that, you know, in, in a couple of years that we're, we've got some talented goalkeepers within the academy that should be in our MLS next pro if they continue, continue to develop and evolve and then should be into the first team at some point as well. Yeah, I want to ask you about the academy in just a sec, but I wanted to, to just uh, touch on Cole and CJ. Obviously, he took Cole with the first round draft pick last year and um, a bit of the reaction often is is – hey, shouldn't you take a first-round draft pick on an outfield player that can, you know, go right into the first team or something like that? 
Cole's probably a bit of a developmental project in, in a room full of four other talented goalkeepers. What was the process in bringing Cole in and, and getting to see what he could do in a limited amount of time? And how has he and CJ been able to get along in, in their experience so far together? So, you know, obviously Cole's the rookie and sometimes rookies kind of get picked on a little bit and for lack of a better term, um, you know, so you, you bring them along and, and not just CJ, but Drake and Nick have been phenomenal with Cole. Um, they're, they've really taken on a little bit of the extension of the coach for us. Like CJ will, you know, speak to Cole about presence and, you know, how he projects himself outward and everything like that. Cause that's something CJ is very strong on. Drake may talk to Cole about preparation and this is what I do. Nick may talk to Drake, uh, to Cole about, you know, how to manipulate the ball with his feet. And, 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 you know, each one is giving Cole little bits of gold dust per se um, to help him develop early and rapidly in his career. Um, so he's he's obviously stepped into a very unique situation where we've got three very talented goalkeepers. Um, they all have some similar strengths and they all have something a little bit different about them that makes them equally special as well. So them sharing those those ideas and, and really just wanting him to continue to develop and, and, and do it at a rapid pace, because obviously coming from college to a professional environment, there is a massive jump. Um and, you know, as far as should we take a field player that can, you know, affect, you know, first team games as well as you look across our lineup and you look at what's available in the draft, um, you know, it, it was just one of those where, like, we felt pretty confident that, you know, what we had coming into the team, that we, we had the right pieces here, um, you know, for, for the team to be successful. And we needed to add other pieces because at the end of the day, you know, with a goalkeeper, it is a later maturing position because of the psychological impact and because of, you know, so many other elements. They have to be good field players as well as, you know, keeping the ball out of the net. So there's a, a lot of different stresses for them and a lot of different areas where they have to try and master versus, you know, not not to knock a field player or anything like that, but how often do they have to worry about keeping the ball out of the back of the net? You know, it's right. it's it's a different position. So you're working in possession and out of possession um, with with different types of skills and everything like that. And the the game has advanced so much over the last ten or so years in terms of the speed of it. Goalkeepers will always struggle early in their career coming out, and you know once they once the game slows down for them then then they have the ability to react and 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 make these good decisions and you know really affect games in a positive way you have kind of like a kid in the candy store situation in terms of cole letting him develop cj dos santos is for from all reports uh, i mean has has the sky as his limit in his career and and really could turn into some potential there and also in the academy you're working with a couple of talented young goalkeepers right now talk talk about the academy process right now what what's going on and some of the higher levels that you're working with and how to get those players into uh hopefully mls next pro in the next couple of years and and see what they're working on towards a senior level team so, um, you know, for me, I, I got to take on the Academy project like officially, um, last January and it was right. Looking at what we could bring in to give us chances at homegrown goalkeepers, because look, that's, that's one of the, one of the big pushes, you know, the Academy helps, you know, by, bringing players in and pushing them into the first team. That's what our ownership wants. That's what our coaching staff wants. Um, so, you know, we had, we had to sit down and we had to, you know, look all over the place in South Florida, um, you know, at goalkeepers of different ages, you know, slightly different builds styles and, and see which ones were the best ones that could fit in our style um, and adapt to what we want them to do. Um, so, you know, we, myself and, and our academy goalkeeping coaches have 
we're, we're always evaluating film. We're watching goalkeepers on weekends when they come in and play us. Our scouts bring them in to our discovery program. So it's it's really something where, number one, we, we needed more quantity of bodies in the building um, because you know, we had two at each team. And if one's injured or if I pull one up, it's a knock-on effect. Um, so, you know, and then also we needed, you know, so, some goalkeepers in that could push and challenge each other. Um, whereas, you know, we'd have a, we'd have a few goalkeepers that were really good. And then we had a few goalkeepers that needed a lot more time to develop. Well, how are the really good ones going to get challenged on a day in and day out basis? Um, you know, if they're working with someone that just needs a lot more time to develop. So we've been able to, uh, acquire more talent and also, um, the quality of our talent has higher ceilings, um, in our opinion now. And that's, that's been something, you know, that I've, I've been fortunate enough to have the support of Craig, our Academy director in developing our Academy goalkeeping profile, um, bringing in goalkeeping coaches that fit exactly what we want, um, or ones that are, you know, checking a lot of the boxes, but they, they're very open to developing themselves. Um, you know, with Academy goalkeepers, obviously it's all about development. So the first thing I think you have to do is you have to teach, um, you know, and it takes special communication skills to teach and, you know, techniques. Um, what, what, what are you using? Are you using your voice? Are you using your session? Are you using film? Are you using all of it? And they have to be able to adapt and do a lot of that um, for our goalkeepers to be successful. And, you know, obviously I bring our Academy goalkeeping coaches in, at least once a week into our environment. Um, Seba is, is bringing them into the first team environment. We've had our Academy goalkeepers um, come into our environment with MLS next pro. Occasionally they'll hop over into the first team as well. Um, so they get to see these types of things, um, you know, from, from different perspectives and from different levels. So when they go back to their team, now they have a better understanding of what it might take um for them to take that next step um, it, it's, it's it, yeah some reference yeah. points it's interesting to hear you talk about that because i i think of of south florida soccer which is so great and has a hotbed of talent in it but oftentimes goalkeeping maybe gets a little left behind down here in terms of of focusing on it from younger age levels there's a lot more focus on technical midfielders strikers etc i would think in, in the south florida soccer scene how, how important is it to, to go out there and get to some of these clubs or or get out in the community and try and find uh, uh, these good goalkeepers that are in South Florida but might not have the same rub as uh, other places around the country? I, I've experienced it in Jacksonville when I was with JFC, Orlando City when I was with them, with Red Bull as well. It's it's finding the right mix. And yeah, it's, it's work. Um, it's, you have to obviously get on the same page as your scouts. So they know what you're looking for, um, what, you know, what skills and actions and personality traits that you want from your goalkeepers at different ages as well. Like, you know, we've got a, a, a U 12 goalkeeper that may not check the box from a height standpoint right now. Well, he's 12 years old. What he does check the box at is he's an absolute winner and he's confident as, as anything. And, you know, that's something that might be harder to teach. Right. And, you know, you just, you hope he continues to grow from uh, a technical and tactical standpoint. He's already got the psychological and the social side of things down. Right. And the only thing that you, you might be a question mark for him may be the physical thing. Um, you know, but if you've got enough of the other boxes checked, you might overlook some of those physical elements, um, you know, so getting out on getting on the same page as our scouts and then bringing us goalkeepers in. And then obviously through our various identification programs, um, we want to make sure that, you know, we have eyes on, them. we get an opportunity to work with them. We want to uh, make sure that we have an opportunity to influence them as well. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, if, if they, continue to trend in the right direction, they're someone that we might look to bring in for weekly training um, and see how they develop in our environment over a longer period of time to where there's no pressure on them, right? In terms of, hey, you've got to do it over one night or two nights, but you have the entire spring 
or you have the next six weeks um, because then, you know, they let their guard down and they're a little vulnerable and then they have the chance to grow. Um, so, you know, from that, and then obviously when we get to older age groups, right, they have to probably check more of the boxes, right? There's less, you know, limitations um, or let less margin of error when you get to older age groups. And hopefully, you know, you, you have uh, more of those boxes are able to be identified because when you're looking at an 11 year old, he may not grow for another two years physically. And, you know, but he's got all these other elements there as part of his game. He's unbelievable at helping his team win games. He's, you know, technical and he understands the game on a high level. So, um, you know, with that young goalkeeper, it's just a matter of giving him time, right? And then, you know, conversely, there's a goalkeeper that had the physical elements and has elite physical elements for a young goalkeeper, just needed time to be coached and 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 really have someone invest time in him as an individual in terms of the you know the technical and tactical elements of the game right because the physical part he just he the kid could pull off an unbelievable save right but he also may have grown eight inches in the last you know two years or something like that so you know loses a little bit of coordination loses a little bit of that body control you know you have to it's it's not always the easiest thing to do is project goalkeepers or their level of success. Um, much like any young soccer player, right? Where it, it, there there is a little bit of a gamble with it. Um, but you know, going through and and really being meticulous on it and knowing what you want um, from the position, from you know, from these people um, when they when you bring them into the club is something that I feel like we've got a pretty good idea about and. You know, not everyone is going to go from U12 to, to U19 or even into the, the second team. Some kids will go, you know, will get to us at U15, U16, and then we're playing catch up um, in certain respects. So, um, you know, we, we find, we find goalkeepers and, you know, I, 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 my, my old saying is I'd love to have had them when they were, when they were U14. Right. Um, so you have more time to get them at that, at that younger age when they're a little bit more impressionable and, and really help them develop all those characteristics that'll help them be successful, you know, in, in, in the game. And then also we're working with young people. How do you, how do you influence them in terms of their life skills? Because, you know, the statistics show it's less than 3% of your academy kids will sign professional contracts, less than 3%. So if we've got 200 kids in the academy, there's less than six players in there, right? You know? Um, and then what are we doing for the rest of them? Are we making them, you know, as good a people as possible? Are we teaching them the life skills of like work ethic, collaboration, you know, respect for their staff, for their peers, for, you know, officials, people they don't even know, that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's a very much as a holistic approach. Um, that we bring to the table within that we want to develop the person as well as the as the player because we know even if they do sign a professional contract how many of them are going to retire from their salary um you know just just playing in the mls it's right. it's going to be a challenge right and even even if they go abroad are they going to retire and be able to live the rest of their life so we have to provide them with things you know and, and a love of maybe the position so they turn into a coach and they can influence the next batch or we have to provide them with you know the the types of things that will help them be successful after college in, in the general workforce because everyone's dream is to play professional soccer that's here i think um you know but the reality of it is it's it, it's not you know going to be something where everyone gets to achieve that dream right Chris, I could listen to you talk about goalkeeping at academies all day long for hours. Thank you so much for taking the time. The director of academy goalkeeping, assistant coach with MLS, Inter Miami uh, 2, Chris Baracus. Thank you so much for joining us on the Heron Outlet. Thank you for having me in. 